The other day, someone sent me this absolutely awful bit of Java code, and it reminded me of a quirk that exists in Python. So in a C-style language like, obviously, C, C++, Java, C Sharp, the semicolon is what marks the termination of a statement, and the compiler or interpreter doesn't actually care how much white space exists between, say, a function call and that semicolon, allowing you to do nonsense like this. The exact same is true with brackets and a bunch of other syntax elements as well. However, a language like Python has a very different approach where it really cares about white space and does its termination with a new line character. But that doesn't mean the semicolon doesn't actually have a really interesting use case inside of Python. Even though when you do talk about the semicolon, you'll usually get one of two responses. The first one is, I literally had no idea that Python even supported that. Or the second one is someone who does know about it and then will start quoting their Python Bible at you saying that this is unpythonic and using the semicolon in Python should never be done. However, I don't really care what the right way to write Python is, so instead we're going to talk about what it does, why it exists, and why even though it's been a standard language feature for so long, why it's so controversial. Now the usage of the semicolon is going to look basically the same as it does in something like C. So we can go and end this statement and end this statement with the semicolon, and if we run this now, it runs perfectly fine. Now my linter is going to complain because I don't actually need these semicolons. It's going to say they are unnecessary semicolons. So in a language like C, the semicolon marks the termination of a statement, but in Python, it actually acts as a delimiter or a separator. Under most situations, this is going to produce basically the same result. So we could even go and include a bunch of extra white space here and it will run exactly the same way. Now doing that doesn't actually have any purpose, but one thing you actually can do with this is include multiple statements on the exact same line. Now, here's where we get into the weird things and the reason why there is actually a difference between a terminator and a delimiter. So not every bit of syntax actually works in this format. In a language like Java, you can compress the entire code base down onto a single line, and this is done in a lot of cases to actually compress the file. But in Python, there are some syntax elements that don't actually play nicely with this format. So for example, if I wanted to do something like this, this actually is invalid. So we're going to do a print statement, then we're going to have the semicolon to delimit it, and have a for statement after that. That's not actually allowed, and if we try to run it, it's going to throw a syntax error. But it does work if we go and flip this around and put that there. I missed the, uh, the F there. If we try and run that now, now it actually will work. It still will complain, but it will work. Another example of this is with this if statement. We can't use the delimiter to have this variable assignment on the same line as the if statement sitting before it. No matter how much we try to run this, this is not going to work. But if we want to go and swap that around, that is then going to be perfectly fine. This right here demonstrates the fact that it is not a statement terminator, it is just a delimiter. If it was a statement terminator, it wouldn't matter if we had any number of print statements before a for statement or for an if statement, it would still work exactly the same way. Now, why in the world does this even exist? What is the purpose? Well, the obvious use case is trolling Python devs who care too much, but what might the actual purpose be that you would want to add this into your language? To understand that, we need to know when Python was created. That was back in 1991. Back then, the language space was very, very different, but languages like C and the very new C++ coming out six years prior were very popular languages. And if you want to have devs come over from another language, one easy way to do so is make it feel somewhat familiar. This is why C style languages exist. You can go from something like C, C++, C Sharp, Java, and already understand most of the syntax elements. While you will have to understand how the language actually works, you don't at least have to think about, do I need brackets? Do I need semicolons and things like that? As someone who first started programming in Java, I can tell you for a fact that old habits die hard, and I reckon it took me at least a month of writing Python code to stop 
automatically adding semicolons to every single line. The semicolon is also a convenient way to handle debugging. So let's say you need to import some sort of debugging library, and then straight after that, you want to run some sort of function from it. Well, you could obviously have these on two separate lines, and that would work perfectly fine. Being able to just write this on one single line saves you just a little bit of hassle of hitting that enter key and dealing with it like that. Or if you wanted to run a print statement directly after a statement, just to make sure you know it's in the right place, that also allows you to actually do that. But probably most importantly is inside of the Python shell or when you're trying to pass something into it as an argument, where we could obviously go and assign a variable and then we could print out the variable. That works perfectly fine. But if you're trying to do something in a repeated way, let's say, I don't know, a debugging statement because that's an obvious example, Having it on a single line makes it much, much easier to go and copy. So every time we want to go and rerun it, rather than having to go and write out each of the individual commands, we could just go and run a single statement and have everything be done. Or let's say you're the sort of person who uses Python for system automation rather than something like Bash or ZSH. In a lot of cases, what you're going to be running doesn't require an entire file. Let's say you're just running maybe like one or two commands and you'd much rather just include it inside of a shell function. So one way we can go and do this is just echo the script into Python and let it run. But a very convenient way to have this run is have it run on a single line. Now, obviously writing code like this is never going to be advised, but if it's something more like, I don't know, we have a print statement and then we have a semicolon. We have a variable assignment and then we have a semicolon. Some people will argue this does make the code somewhat more readable. I would argue that being the case, but if you do come from a language where semicolons are just the standard way of working, I can totally understand why you would have that opinion. Over the years, Python has had many changes, but it still attempts to follow what is known as the Zen of Python. This is basically the design guide for Python, the Bible of Python, if you will. Beautiful is better than ugly. Explicit is better than implicit. Simple is better than complex. So on and so forth. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. And that has then gone to inform things like the Python style guide. And this is where you start to see the term unpythonic. When something doesn't follow the general idea of what Python actually is, even if it's something built directly into the language by the developers of the language, it still might be considered an unpythonic way to write the code. If you want another rabbit hole to just spend hours upon hours looking into, look at the pythonic way to print a formatted string. There are so many ways to print a string inside of Python, and it's just a bunch of people arguing over which one is following the Zen of Python more. But anyway, the reason why I brought up the style guide is because the style guide is used as an example of why you shouldn't use semicolons inside of Python. And usually people are going to reference the compound statement section. So compound statements, multiple statements on the same line are generally discouraged. So this right here is the correct way to write this, but this method right here would be the wrong way. And this right here is what we were doing earlier. But the style guide doesn't actually say it's wrong. It says it's wrong in this section, but let's go over to another section. So if we go over to the pet peeve section, it actually doesn't say it's wrong. So if we go down to the trailing commas, this is an example of a correct Python statement. This is an example of a wrong Python statement. Both of them are using a semicolon to write two statements, this statement right here and this statement right here on a single line. Which one of them is correct? I don't actually know. But what I do know is that following some sort of a style guide that is internally consistent is going to be important. So if you decide that using semicolons is okay, it's okay. If you decide it's not okay, like most Python devs have decided, then it's not going to be okay. If you work on a public Python project, I'm not saying go and add a bunch of semicolons into it. You'll probably get kicked off of the project. But to say it's inherently wrong is actually ignoring Python's own documentation. Now, if I don't have angry Python devs in my comments section, I'm going to be very sad today. I, uh, I, really, I really want that to happen. I think it's going to be kind of fun. That's honestly the main reason I made this video, to be completely frank. 
I think the Python semicolon argument is the dumbest argument I've ever seen. No one actually cares. Most Python devs don't even know a, a semicolon even exists in the language. So it's not actually something to be worried about, but I thought it'd be fun to talk about nonetheless. So that's going to be it for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters, these beautiful people over here. If you want to become one of these amazing people, you can go down to my Patreon, subscribe, sell Libera pay, all linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T, where I'm going to be using my Shaw SM7B now, which I'm very happy I have. That is available pretty much anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also going to be available over on Odyssey. That's it for me, and I'm out.